Hello, I welcome you all. The problem reads, uh, the beam AB has a negligible mass and uh, thickness and is subjected to a force of 200 newtons. It is supported at what one end by a pin and at another end by a, a spool having a mass of 40 kg. If a cable is wrapped around the inner core of the spool, determine the minimum cable force P needed to move the spool. The coefficients of static friction at B and D are mu B equal to 0.4 and mu D equal to 0.2 respectively. This problem is coming from uh, the Engineering Mechanics uh, Statics uh, textbook, the 10th edition by Arasi Hibela. So we have a spool, this is a spool, okay, and it has the inner core, this one here, and the, uh, around this inner core, a cable is wrapped, okay. A cable is wrapped. So now we have been asked to find the minimum cable force P needed to move the spool. But before we start solving the problem, let's analyze really what is happening here. So what happens when we apply a force P? Okay. Because, so when we apply a force, because the wrapping around this is uh, like this. Okay. Okay, this is how the wrapping is done, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens, what do you think happens when we pull this particular or we apply a force P along this cable? This particular spool tends to rotate like this, okay? This is anti-clockwise or counter-clockwise. So what is the question? The question is to determine the minimum, uh, the minimum cable force P needed to move the spool. So we are talking about movement. So we determine how this spool is going to rotate. But how is it going to move? Will it go to the right or will it go to the left? What do you think? As it rotates counterclockwise, you expect the spool to go to the left, right? Mm -hmm. It has to go to the left. But as it moves, we need to be mindful of the slip. We are being asked to determine the minimum cable force P needed to move the spool. It's moving to the left. But where do you think you expect slip as the spool, spool moves to the left? Of course, it just makes sense that you do not expect and a slip at D for it to move, right? If you wanted to move this spool to move, you don't expect any slip at D. You want it to move, all right? You want it to move. So as it is rotating, it will be moving to the left, all right? But what happens at B if there's not going to be any slip at D? Of course, since it is a hinge at a, it is not free to move in the horizontal direction. So what do you think is going to happen at B? There's going to be what? Sleep, of course. There is going to be sleep. So that's the catch weight. That is what we just need to understand about this particular problem. Once we have that understanding, then the problem is solved. So there's going to be sleep at B, but no sleep at D if this spool was to move. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that fine? Great. So having said that, then let's go ahead and draw the free body diagram. Okay, so there we go. So we have this particular beam with negligible mass, right? That's what we've been taught. So we have point A, which is a hinge. So we expect AY and AX like so. Then we have a force 200 newtons at a distance uh, 2 meters. Then we have a normal force here, you know, because uh, uh, the, the, the beam is exerting a force on the inner core of the spool and the inner core is exerting a reaction force we are calling NB. All right. And this is at the distance one meter and uh, the overhang there is also one. So this is a free body diagram, but it is not yet done. 
at B, we also expect a friction force. Like we said, this pool is moving to the left. Okay. And it is rotating in a counterclockwise direction as we apply a force P. So what do you think is going to be happening on the beam? Because we say it is moving to the left. So we expect some friction force on the left to resist this slip to the left. Okay. To the left. Right. And this is going to be going in this direction like that. Is that fine? FB. All right. So we have determined that. Then let's draw what happens on the spool. Okay. On the spool. The spool has two things. It's a, it has the outer core and the inner core. Right. And with different diameters. The outer core has a diameter of 0.3. And the other one point one okay of course this point is B here this point is B and then here where the inner core is in contact with uh, the beam at B you expect a reaction NB in the opposite direction right so this reaction is going to be coming down let me use maybe another color you expect a reaction like this we are calling it NB okay and we also expect another reaction here, which is just going to be opposite that on the beam, which is FB, like so. Okay. And then what else? Uh, we have this point is D here. So we're going to have a reaction here from the ground, from the surface where the pool is in contact with. We are calling it ND okay and since this pool it tends to move tends to move to it is it is in the clockwise it's in the clockwise i mean counterclockwise you see it's in the counterclockwise so we expect a force that will counter that in that it has to be in the opposite direction like that right all right so here we expect a force like this which is our fd is that fine? Mm -hmm. This is fine. So I think we've drawn, but we've remained with one thing. We've been told the weight, the weight of this uh, particular uh, spool is 40 kg. So this is a 40 times 9.81, which is equal to uh, 392.4. Newtons. Okay. Let me just move this a little bit. Like so. Okay. I think we are done with the free body diagrams. So what we need to do now is uh, start applying the equations of equilibrium as well as the friction equation at, T, at B. Okay. The inner core B. So let's take moments about A. So we have summation of moments about point A equal to zero. Anti-clockwise being our reference, like so. So what do we have? We have a minus moment minus 200 by 2, okay, plus NB times 3 equal to 0. Therefore, NB, making NB subject to the formula, will have a 133.33 newtons. Okay, so we did say that at B, at B, we expect, at B, we expect, we expect some slip. Okay, and at D, we said we do not expect and a slip okay for the spool to move all right because this beam is hinged at a so there's going to be slip at b but no slip at a but we are just using the boundary condition you just want to find just the minimum force at the very boundary okay boundary that is the friction at b must be equal to the uh maximum friction at 
uh, at B. So we are saying the friction at B, we are using this, must be equal to mu B uh, and B. This is, this is the condition we want to use at the very boundary for us to work out this problem. Right. So we've uh, found what NB is. So then now, we therefore know now to say, or we invoke the friction equation to say FB should be equal to MB NB for uh, the uh, for the slip to take place because we are just at the very edge, at the very edge, at the very. It's a limit point, or that's a line that just. Uh, it's a limit point, I would say, it, or the edge, okay? So the moment FB, we know the moment FB just becomes greater than mu B and B, the knee slipping knee has started. So we are just using the edge, the boundary. So we invoke this friction equation, which is equal to, because mu B has already, mu B has been given already, this is point four and B. Right. So now let's take summation of moments in the y. So let me write this somewhere. So because I'll need to clear off this for space, nb is equal to 133.33 newtons. So summation of forces in the y direction equal to zero. So what do we have? We have minus, so we are now on the spool. We have minus nb. Okay, minus 392.4 plus nd equal to zero. So we know what, uh, we know what uh, nb is, nb is, so we can replace this nb here. We can replace it there. And once we do so, then we'll find that our nd is going to be equal to I uh, five to five point seven three newtons, right? Of course. So we have one three three point three three plus three nine two point four. No, not plus minus one one three three point three three minus three nine two point four. Okay. So we found what ND is, then summation of forces in the X direction equal to zero. What we have, we have minus FB uh, plus P. There's a P there, sorry, I forgot to indicate a P. There's a P here on the spool, sorry. Okay. Uh, and then minus FG equal to zero. Okay. Then we know that FB, FB is equal to, FB is equal to, um, okay, we already know what FB is. So we can just use the arrow. We know that FB is this one here. So we can just, sorry, this is our FB. Okay. So with that FB there, uh, of course we will have two unknowns there. We have P and FD. So what we need to do now is we need another equation so let's take another equation let's take moments about point d take moments about point d so say summation of moments about point d equal to zero and clockwise be our reference all right what do we have we have fb this is and clockwise fb times this is the diameter of the inner core is 4, and then the other one, 0.3 minus 0.1. I mean, the diameter of the inner core is 0.2, then the other one is 0.3 minus 0 0.1, 0.2, so 0.4. Okay, this is 0 0.4. 0 0.4, uh, 0.4 minus uh, 0.2 equal to 
uh, 0. Then we know what FB is. FB is this one here, so we can just replace it there. Okay. And once we do so, then we'll find that P is equal to P is equal to 106.66 newtons. Okay, but we are not yet done. We need to check uh, the friction, compare the friction FD and the maximum friction at D to see whether they slip or not slip. So let's find what mu D, mu D and D is. Mu D and D is equal to 0.2 times. What is our ND? We found our ND as 525.73. And then when we multiply these two, when we multiply these two, what do we find? So 0 0.2 by 525.73, we find a 105.15 newtons. Right, so let's do the comparison. FD, we calculated FD as equal to, we haven't yet calculated, let's do the calculation. From this equation, from this equation, our FD is going to be equal to, our FD is equal to, so we know that P, we already calculated what P here is 106.66, so let's find what FD is. So we have uh, minus 0.4 times 133.33. Uh, plus 106.66 so we found that our fd is equal to 53 point rounding it off to 33 three newtons therefore comparing the two fd which is equal to 53.33 newtons is less than mu d n d Okay, which is equal to one one zero five point one five. Therefore, no sleep, no sleep where, no sleep at D. Hence, okay. Hence, okay. Okay. So finally. Our P, therefore, is equal to our P minimum is equal to 106.66 newtons. Right. So this is our final answer. Uh, this is the final answer. And uh, I hope the video was helpful. And if it was, give me a thumbs up, like my channel, continue subscribing. Bye-bye and see you in my next uh, screencast.